After we have installed the Flutter SDK, the next steps involve setting up the ability to run and deploy iOS and Android apps. This can be done using Flutter Doctor. Flutter Doctor is a terminal command which tells us if there are any dependencies that we should install to complete the setup for Flutter and the ability to run or deploy Android and iOS apps. So let's switch to our terminal window and run Flutter Doctor. The first time you run Flutter Doctor, it could take significantly longer than the time it takes on subsequent runs. The part of this output that's related to the Flutter Doctor command starts from the statement that contains the words Doctor Summary. The part above that in my case tells me that my command line developer tools are broken. You may not see this part when you run Flutter Doctor. However, if you do see it, we'll get to fixing this later in this lesson. Most likely, what you will see here instead is a green check mark instead of a warning sign with the installed Flutter version mentioned next to it. Below the status for the Flutter SDK, the Flutter Doctor summary tells us that we have problems with the Android toolchain, which enables us to build Android apps. Below that, we see that we are missing Xcode as well, which would allow us to deploy apps on iOS and macOS. The summary then also tells us that we don't have Android Studio installed. Note that here this is shown as a warning and not an error as you can run your Flutter app on iOS even though you may not be able to run it on Android without Android Studio. And then finally, we are also warned that we have no connected devices to run our apps on. To begin fixing these issues, let's start by installing Xcode which is the IDE used to build and run apps for iOS. I'm doing this using the link provided here, but you can also choose to do this using the App Store. Once you are on the download page, click on the More button where we can search for the last stable release of Xcode instead of using a beta version. An Xcode download file is huge in size and it may not be compatible with your Mac OS if you are not on the latest version of Mac OS. So before you download this file, check out the Xcode release notes link in the lesson notes to see which version of Xcode you should download. When downloaded, unzip the package. This process could take a long time as well. Note that this package unzips in the download folder by default. Let's leave it there for now. Now when we run Flutter Doctor again, we don't see any major changes but Flutter Doctor still doesn't recognize that now we do have Xcode installed. Let's see why. In the instructions, it says that once installed, run these two commands. Let's copy the first one and run it. Since this is a sudo command, you will be prompted to enter your password. Once you do that and hit the return key, you would see an error about the invalid developer directory, which is interestingly similar to the error we have above, stating that there is an error with our active developer path. To fix all three of these issues, head over to the downloads folder and drag Xcode inside the applications folder. Once you do that and run Flutter Doctor again, you would see that our Flutter SDK is identified correctly plus Xcode is identified as well, which is denoted by the Xcode version being shown next to it. But we still need to install additional components for it to run. So let's execute the first launch command given in the instructions. This executes perfectly in one go. On running Flutter Doctor again, we see that the Xcode section is a warning and not an error anymore. There is a suggestion to install Cocoa Pods 
which would allow us to work with iOS plugins in Flutter. To install Cocoa Pods, you can use this command here or use Homebrew by executing brew install Cocoa Pods. In my case, I already had Cocoa Pods installed at some point so there seems to be a conflict on executing this command. I fix that using a force overwrite for linking Cocoa Pods using Homebrew. But in your case, Cocoa Pods should install correctly in the first go. On running Flutter Doctor, once Cocoa Pods is installed, we are asked to initialize the installed Cocoa Pods using the command pod setup. Once that's done, we now see that running Flutter Doctor shows that our Xcode setup is complete and we can develop for iOS and Mac OS. Next, to set up the Android toolchain, let's install Android Studio first, as suggested in the instructions. Once installed, let's continue with the setup here to install the Android SDK. You would be prompted to enter your password during the installation process to allow the installation of Intel's HAXM engine, which is an accelerator for Android emulator, among other things. Now, on running Flutter Doctor, the Android toolchain error goes away as it identifies that we have installed the Android SDK, but we have a new error stating that the Android license status is unknown. To fix this, head over to the SDK manager in Android Studio. There, under the SDK Tools tab, you should select Android SDK command line tools and install it by pressing OK. Once that's done, the error from Flutter Doctor goes away and we are asked to accept Android licenses using the Flutter command mentioned there. On executing it, we are shown a bunch of licenses that we can accept by pressing the Y key for each one of them and then pressing the return key after that. Great, now we are ready to build apps for both Android and iOS. There's just this one warning that shows us that we don't have Android Studio installed even though we have done that already. Similar to the solution for Xcode, this can be fixed by moving Android Studio to the applications package if you haven't done that already. Once we do that, Android Studio is now identified as installed, but now the summary complains that Android Studio doesn't have the Flutter and Dart plugins, which is okay as we don't need them at this point and we learn how to install them in another lesson.